What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. You can see I'm getting ready, finally getting ready to install the Merc HX here and this uh, CWA 150 coolant pump. Uh, I originally ordered the, uh, this is the Merc uh, 3.0 THX, but originally I ordered the Merc uh, 4.0 T uh, heat exchanger, which is a little bit bigger than this one. And the end tanks are, uh, the end tanks are shaped a little different. I think that gives it a little bit better flow. But uh, I ordered that one and this is what came in the mail. So I hit up uh, Jose at Merck and it uh, looks like there was some type of mistake. He actually didn't have the uh, 4.0 T. Because my originally when I looked on his site, he didn't have any of the uh, brand new uh, 4.0 T uh, heat exchangers in stock. But there was one in the clearance section that was just like a... It just had like a co cosmetic flaw, so like a scratch or something. So I don't really care about that. You know, I didn't see anything on it in the picture. So, and it's not really going to be seen anyway. So I ordered that one and this is what came, but it turned out that I think he actually didn't have any of the, even the new 4.0 T heat exchangers in stock and he wasn't going to have any for a while. So I just went ahead and kept this one. So I'm going to be running this and I bought the uh, the uh, convenience install kit so it comes with all the holes, connectors, and everything. And then uh, I found this CWA 150 brand new at a dealership for a real good deal. I just uh, went and picked it up and saved even more money. Then I found uh, somebody on eBay that was making harnesses for the CWA 100. And he said he could make me one for the CWA 150. So I have a prototype right here. And he also made one for himself because he just installed a CWA 152. And so far he said everything's working fine on his car. So I'm gonna be installing this prototype. And then I told, uh, Jose at uh, Merck Racing about it too. So he's got that information too because he said there's a lot of people who's been asking about harnesses and he doesn't actually make them. I think his pumps come with the harness. So whoever he's getting his pump from, they send them with the harness. But sometimes people might find their own pump for a cheap price or something. They don't just don't have the harness. So the guy I found this was on eBay. He, uh, I think he has a shop or something. His name is uh, Francisk445. So by the time I have this video up, I'll put a link in the description so you guys can get in contact with him about making these. And then he should have these up pretty soon. It looks like everything's going to work. Uh, the, uh, the wire gauge is the same thing as factory. This pump actually comes from the uh, Audi e-tron. To cool the batteries actually but uh this is similar to the cwa 100 but the thing is with the cwa 100 i heard that people were having problems with them burning out because they run them at at 100 percent all the time because the factory pwm can't control the speed of it because in the cwa 150 it does the uh, PWM can control the speed just like it does the CWA50. So it'll pump, you know, at a lower speed and then it'll pump at a higher speed once the car gets moving or once it heats up. However, the PWM controls it, whatever criteria it uses to, to control. I don't know if it's when the car starts moving or, or if it does it by, by heat, but it'll speed it up and then slow it down when it needs to slow down. So this should be in a nice little upgrade. And then on top of that, the other benefit of this is this is gonna be pushing more of the cooler through fluid through the from the HX through the supercharger to keep the supercharger cooler because, you know, this is modified and it has the uh, smaller pulley, so spinning faster, creating more heat. So the supercharger's pushing out a lot, you know, hotter air. So it needs to be cooled a little bit more 
to keep efficiency up, you know, lower intake temp, you know, more, more uh, performance. So that is going to push more of the cooler fluid through the, uh, through the intercooler cores inside the supercharger to keep it cooler, basically. So, but anyway, uh, I'm about to get started with this install and then I get back with you guys and we'll see what kind of temps I get. You guys have just got the, uh, the uh, cooler off though, the heat, the stock heat exchanger off. See, I got the lines pinched. Both of the lines pinched. Uh, but check this out, I want to show the size difference. So, you can see I got it lined up to where the, uh, to where the core ends. So this is gonna be like right here, just to show like how much, uh, how much more capacity you have. So we're gonna do from here and to about right there. So you got more than double the capacity because all this is gonna be covered with this and up to here. So you got more than double the capacity now for uh, cooling. So you got more than double the capacity of the, uh, the cooling fan area, cooling area, than you do with the stock cooler. So, and pushing more fluid through that is just going to help the charger uh, cool off more efficiently than, than than it is with the stock. With the stock, it, with the stock, it just it wasn't bad, but you know when I took it off, you could see a lot of stuff was falling out. So you probably need to clean these things too every once in a while. So I'll probably take a vacuum and clean the fins on my uh, on my radiator and the uh, and the uh, condenser or whatever that is for the uh, air conditioner too. But all right, I'm gonna get back to it and I get back with y'all. All right, you guys, excuse the lighting got late, but uh, got everything hooked up. You can see here. Uh, uh, let me turn this light on. Give me a second. You can see here I just mounted the tabs going out I know some people mount it the other way with these around but I just mounted it like that in case I need to make any adjustments or anything later and just got it like that mark everything and I didn't take the hole I just took these bolts out took this part off drill the holes and I used the self tapping uh, screws that came with it and then uh, as far as the lines at the bottom I use the silicone ones that come with it, and you can see I just drilled a, you know, put a hole in this uh, plastic panel to put the holes through. Came under the bottom like that, connected, made that one connection, came over, put some zip ties right through the bottom of, uh, right there through the bottom, you know, so the holes is not flapping around. Came over. Make the last connection right there and you see I got the pump in so the CWA 150s in this is the harness that comes uh, the harness that you guys might be ordering later this is a prototype like I said and uh, but this is the other only difference I saw was this right here the hookup so this one's smaller. This one takes a bigger one. I guess that's why you need the harness. So, and plus, it's wired. That wire different too. So, and uh, I left this. I don't know what this is for, but I figure it's extra cooling capacity. So I didn't remove it or anything. But that's it. Got everything hooked up. Uh, I just gotta put the coolant and everything in and bleed it, but. Like I said, it's late, so what I'm gonna do is uh, probably put the bumper back on tonight and then bleed it in the morning or something. And then I'll have this going tomorrow. All right, you guys, I'm back. Uh, I drove the car around last night and bled it a little bit more than I bled it a little bit more this morning. And I had to drive, you know, take a drive, take care of some business this morning about, what, 20 miles? But I noticed when I got on the freeway, uh, it was, uh, it was what, uh, like, uh, 60, 60 something degrees, like high sixties. 
and uh, no, it was low 60s, I'm sorry. I think it was 61 degrees and I was at like uh, 75, somewhere around there, but I know it was like, uh, I stayed a consistent 13 degrees above ambient all the way until I got to where I'm going. Well, almost all the way, because I got on it. And of course the temp shot up, but then they, they rapidly went back down. And right now you can see I'm at, uh, it's 70 degrees. Fahrenheit, I'm on my way back from where I was in the car, sat for like about 45 minutes. So of course it was like heat, so it was like 123. When I started to car up, the temps were, the intake air temp, but now you can see I'm at like, what, 16 degrees above ambient. And that seems to be the trend so far for like cruising speed. I know some people are saying they get like 20 but I've been so far I've been getting like around 20 but mostly staying under 20 which is good so seems like that uh, that CWA 150 is doing its job so you know like I said I'm, I still got to bleed it some more I got to do the uh, the old 34 uh, billet uh, charger bleed screws and I'll bleed that out a little bit more and then go from there but so far so good y'all uh you can see that I've been driving around got on it a little bit uh, i'm at 71 degrees right now i'm at 92 so it's fluctuating up and down but you know around 20 degrees above ambient on the freeway of course so i want to get on it right quick to see how fast the temps will drop so we're gonna do a lot of cars out so bear with me from uh what, what was that 140 I, I couldn't had my eyes on the freeway by like one mid mid to high 140s and then it starts dropping back down and then it, of course you know it takes a little while to get back down to around 20 degrees above ambient so you know probably like divorcing the system and running uh you know, just, just straight distilled water and a, a little bit of G13 or water wear, I guess. It'll probably make those temps drop a little faster, but it seems like the CWA is pretty solid, man. I think, uh, I see, I don't know if there's anything, uh, any pumps that are bigger in the same body of the CW, uh, CWA pumps. I've only seen, the biggest one I've seen was the CWA 150, so... Is that something to think about? But there's still a little bit more to do, like putting some ducting around the uh, around the uh, heat exchanger to get more airflow, especially like when you're at a light and you put the fans on high, you'll get a little bit more airflow through the uh, heat exchanger, and you know it'll help drop temps more. Like if you're at a light or something like that, or if you're at a drag strip, and you know. All right, so I was about to uh, put the billet bleeder screws in the supercharger and bleed it, but one of them broke. <laughs> you can see right there, this broke off. I got this one to turn. I stuck a flat head in there and just kept doing it. I also put a vice grip and turned it, and that one started to turn. So being that I, I got to work tomorrow, the next three days before Thanksgiving, I'm just gonna go ahead and wait to uh, mess with this in case anything else happens so I can drive the rest of the week. So I'm gonna wait until sometime during the week when I'm off of work, when we're off for vacation to uh, put the billet bleeder screws in. Uh, drove the car around some more. I noticed after I did a few hard pulls that 
when I was cruising, it was taking longer for it to cool down. So, of course, you know, I think there's still some air. So, for now, I've just been burping it through the uh, coolant cap. Just letting, you know, driving around, letting it cool down. And then I'll kind of squeeze this hose right here. And that, that could kind of tell me if there's still a lot of air in the system. It was kind of tight. So, I bled it out. And uh, so, I'll probably be doing that the next few days until I'm able to... Uh, get these uh, bleeder screws out. And I did uh, open this one this morning. And as soon as I cracked it, uh, coolant was coming out with no bubbles. So it seems like that's probably bled. The only thing about this is that it's like you got to get it so tight that, uh, you know, a flathead won't really open it. And in fact, this morning when I tightened as much as I can with the flathead, it was still seeping out a little bit. So I had to get a vice grip and tighten it with that. I mean, some channel locks and tighten it with that. So probably gonna be looking for a better seal for this. But uh, other than that, uh, everything seems fine. Still gonna look for a way to control the... Uh... Sorry, y'all. Just got interrupted. This guy's back again, so it's about to go down. But uh, let me finish this right quick. <laughs> We're probably gonna get out here and uh, do this in a little bit. But uh, yeah, uh, I noticed the temps, like after I do a few hard pulls, that the temps were staying like uh, around 30, around the, you know, the low 30s above ambient. And then after a while, it would start falling down. So I'm thinking, uh, something good to do would would be uh because i'm thinking uh i thought that the uh when the fans came on like when you do the uh the max cool feature or whatever it's called that the pump came on too but it seemed like that's not the case because i was out here last night and i turned the fans on high through the cruise control for the stage two tune and i put my hand on the pump and i didn't feel anything on the pump so I think the pump is only coming on high, like when you're on the like freeway. So I'm, I gotta see how this pump is actually controlled. What I'm hearing is that it's actually controlled by the car speed. Like if you're on the freeway, you're getting on it hard that the, the pump will come on full speed. So I'm gonna try to look up in BCDS to see like uh, if there's any way to control it or maybe uh, hook up a switch inside the car so like, after I do a hard pull and I'm like, you know, at a light or something like that or at a stop, I could turn the pump on 100 percent and let it uh, cool the uh, the intake uh, heat down and then be ready for another run or whatever. Because, like I said, like I noticed that after I'm doing a hard pull, like it's taking, you know, a little bit of time to uh for it to come all the way back down to like uh you know like the 20s like 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 around 20 20 degrees above ambient you know like it would like just on a normal cruising or something like that all right y'all but that's gonna be it for this video uh leave a like comment subscribe and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video and make sure to subscribe because that race is coming up